Hey there, guys. Um, today I'm working on a Chevy Silverado 2500 HD and um, was doing a brake job on it and ran into some trouble getting the rotors off. Maybe you guys have experienced this. Um, I tried all kinds of different things. Um, heat, uh, let them soak with penetrating oil, uh, seafoam deep creep, um, beat on it with a hammer and a chisel or a punch, I should say, um, was just not having any luck. And, you know, my issue here is uh, these 2500 HDs and 3500s and some other vehicles do this, I think, where, you know, the rotor isn't just, um, you know, kind of pinched between the hub and the wheel. They also add, like, this screw here. It's like a, a metric screw with a, a T30 Torx and a chamfer on it like a chamfer, like a countersunk head. And um, I was having a lot of, I couldn't get this, uh, this kind of retaining screw out of here. You know, you, with, with that there, you can't just pull the rotor off. So um, kind of after trying all those things that uh, I had mentioned there before, um, I, was, I Googled a little bit and um, I found a video from um, Eric the car guy who was kind of doing a hammer trick. I tried that, that didn't work for me, um, but there was a, a guy that had commented on that video that mentioned um, using the lug nuts to put pressure on the rotor. And um, I thought, man, that's that sounds like a good idea, that might work. So what I ended up doing here on this truck, guys, and this did work, is um, you can see I took the lug nuts and I ran them into these three quarter inch, uh, you know, just standard grade eight coarse um, nuts. And um, I did that because um, you guys know, like, today everyone likes these fancy uh, blackout wheels and stuff. And this truck has fancy wheels like that with these black lug nuts to match. And, um, you know, I didn't want to screw these up uh, by just running the, uh, the face of the lug nut right into it because you can't use the backside. You know, like, if this was a regular truck with just where the lug nuts are open... You know, like an open through hole with um, flat on the back side. You could just, you know, turn the lug nut around and, uh, you know, stick a few washers back there and just run the lug nuts back on to put some pressure on the rotor. Um, but in this case, I, I wanted to protect, this isn't my truck, I'm working on it for someone else. Um, I wanted to do, uh, find a way that I would not mess them up and uh, kind of the, uh, you can you guys can pick whatever size you want. I used a three quarter, but you can see it kind of has that nice chamfer there to um, kind of accept the uh, uh, the fancy lug nut. So that worked pretty good. Um, and uh, what I did was I, I ran these down pretty tight. Um, I've got a Milwaukee compact uh, half inch. I was I ran them in on setting two, um, which is probably like 150 to 200 foot pounds or so. And, uh, you know, that really pushes the rotor hard up against the hub. And then um, I was beating on it by hand with just a chisel. I was just using a, a one pound or a 16 ounce snap on dead blow with this, uh, with this wild uh, chisel. Um, this is a, I'll give you guys the part number here, um, PS1232. It's got like a three eighths inch uh, tip under so. That worked pretty good for just kind of beating on the, the head of that thing. If you guys don't have an air hammer, that might work for you. Um, so I, you know, I, I cranked those down, I beat on it, and um, it, it still didn't quite, it was starting to come, but still not quite. What I ended up using, guys, was an air hammer. Um, I think if you would beat on it long enough by hand, eventually you'll get it. But I used my Snap-on um, PH3050B. And I've got like a Mayhew um, kind of blunt tip, a uh, half inch, uh, kind of three eighths to half inch or so tip on the thing. And I wrapped on that. I wrapped on the head of the of that little set screw there and kind of all around in this area to kind of beat the, the rust, um, to kind of break the rust up a little bit. So I live in the rust belt here. And as you guys know, everything comes apart hard here. You need to spray penetrant all over everything to get anything apart. Um, so kind of wrapping on it with the air hammer, I was able to kind of cycle back and forth between beating on it and then running on it, um, running the Milwaukee down on it again. 
and kind of get a got maybe another quarter turn or half inch quarter or a half a turn on these lug nuts to kind of keep putting more pressure and breaking that rust up back there and uh, then I wrapped on the head some more and um, then I got it out um, I should mention too guys that when you beat on the head of this thing um, you'll kind of tend to peen over the Torx uh, pattern a little bit and actually um, you know don't worry um, actually kind of peening it over kind of gives you a really nice tight fit of your bit here so what I used was a uh, I've got a snap on um, T30 3 8 drive um, bit socket here and then I used this uh, here, let me turn this around so I can read the part number you guys have seen these before but this is a uh, uh, just a 3 3 8 drive you know manual impact so you you hit this with a hammer after you set it in the right direction. So this is a snap on PIT 120. So this worked pretty good. Um, I just insert it here. So what you do is, you know, you insert it into the um, the screw there. You beat on it with a hammer while you're kind of pulling it counterclockwise, and eventually it did come out. So um, I also wanted to mention, guys, that, you know, this these kind of countersunk screws you know, with that tape around there, they really make a really um, tight metal-to-metal -metal seal. So you can see, like, even though I've, I've got this thing all soaked up and I was soaking it from the back with Deep Creep 2, like, nothing really made it in here. So um, you can't really rely on penetrant to help you much here. I think you've got to rely on kind of heat, heat vibration and pressure to get this thing out. Um, but this did finally work. Um, if you guys run into this, I, I hope this uh, works for you too. I would say that if I still couldn't get it, maybe the next thing I would have tried was putting two more lug nuts on and putting even more pressure on this plate or on the rotor here and you know, maybe going up higher on the impact to try to push even harder because I think they're short of um, drilling this out and retapping. There's just no other way to get this thing out of here. Um, maybe as a side mention here, uh, if you guys are watching this video and you haven't gotten into this job yet on your truck, the bolts that hold the, let me get a light here, the bolts that hold the caliper bracket onto the uh, the steering knuckle there are really, really tight. So um, these are like, a, it's like a fine thread M12 or M16. Uh, and you can see there's like this yellow pre-applied thread locker on it from GM from the factory and they are they're a beast to get out so um, on the lower side you, you first of all you're going to want to turn your steering uh, wheel to full lock in that direction so you've got a better chance of getting tools back there on this lower one I was able to get a three-quarter inch impact uh, with a deep socket on and um, the top, though, there's just, you know, there's your uh, shock and other crap in the way. There just isn't enough room back there to get uh, a power tool on. So you've kind of got to resort to hand force on that one. On the lower one, the three-quarter impact did get it out, but on that top one, I couldn't get anything else in there, so I had to kind of use a three-quarter inch breaker bar. So this is like a, a three-quarter drive by about three and a half feet long. And then you don't have a lot of room in there, so I reduced down to um, um, three-quarter to half-inch snap-on reducer with a 6.21-millimeter um, socket on. And th that could be chrome or impact. Either will fit, but you got to kind of have the right length um, to fit in there. So, yeah, prepare yourselves for a fight on that one, guys. I would say that, um, you know, it didn't move till I was putting maybe 400 foot-pounds on it or so. So it's tight. You're going to have a... A hard time getting this apart with half inch drive so uh, prepare yourself for that um, so yeah I think that's uh, what I wanted to cover here in the video guys um, uh, I I, I, th I believe the guy who commented on that um, Eric the car guys video his name was Dennis so uh, thanks Dennis I'm really glad you commented I don't think I would have been able to get this off today or I definitely would have Definitely would have broken my uh, my torque spit here. You can see how you can see how twisted it is. It almost gave up even with doing all this. So um, yeah, that that uh, 
that screw is in there and you're in you're in for a fight if you don't uh, approach this the right way so so yeah um, thanks for watching the video guys I uh, hope this uh, helps someone get out of a jam have a good day bye hey guys uh, one of these days I'm gonna be able to make one of these videos all in one take but uh, I I had a few things that I forgot that I was gonna mention and but we're gonna cover those now quick um, if you guys are in the rust belt like me, uh, when you put your new rotors on, um, just make sure you um, put some anti-seize. Terrell calls it anti Um But yeah, something, a product like this, the, um, the silver, the copper stuff, um, put that between your, uh, your hub and your rotor. Uh, where your where the hub contact surfaces are so, so you can get that thing off the next time you have to goop up that um, bore that that retaining screw is in so you can get that out again easier next time and um, also if you guys are in a, a, a location where there's salt on the roads in the winter um, do yourself a favor and when you guys buy rotors get these kind that have like the full uh, like uh, coating on them so you know, these have been available now for a few years, and I really like them. Um, you guys know when you pull rotors off on a rust belt vehicle, there is just rust everywhere and rust coming out of the air veins, and it's just a big rusty mess. I have noticed that these coated ones do hold up a lot better in the salt. Um, I've got the new pads uh, kind of sitting here in place on the caliper bracket, so you can see them. And what I forgot to, what I was going to mention in the previous video, guys, is um, this truck had uh, was pulsating when you were stopping and the pads were wearing also wearing unevenly so the rotors were warped and then they also had this uneven wear so you see how much um, you know this uh, outboard pad is about double the thickness of the inboard and the reason that happens is that your um, your caliper can't move on the slide pins so like it's getting kind of hung up and it's applying pressure on just the inboard pad when you step on the pedal so um, to fix that, um, you know, you pull these boots off of here, and um, on, on this truck, this lower one had a bunch of corrosion up inside this bore here. So, you know, ream that out with like a wire brush, get all that rust out of there, clean it out good with like brake cleaner or lacquer thinner or something, and lube that up real good with pin grease before you put things back together. You know, put the pin grease in the bore, put it all over on the boot, put the boots back on, and then, you know, rough up your, um, get the corrosion off your slide pins too, and then lube them up with pin grease um, before you insert them back into the caliper. And once you do get the caliper set back on to the caliper bracket, uh, just push on it back and forth and make sure that that caliper is sliding back and forth on those pins and isn't, isn't hanging up. Um, on these big trucks like this, it's, it can be kind of hard to move by hand. If it doesn't move by hand, you know, tap on it with like a rubber mallet back and forth and make sure that caliper is sliding freely to make sure you're going to, you know, fix your issue and that you'll have even wear on your pads like you want. So, so yeah, that was um, a few things I kind of missed in that first segment there, but um, I think I just about covered everything here. Oh, one last thing I wanted to mention. Back in my earlier days, I always used to just hang these calipers with like a copper wire or something, but I do really like these um, uh, caliper hangers. So you hang it around your, it's like kind of an S-shaped hanger, you hang it around your control arm and then through like one of your holes on your caliper uh, to kind of, you know, support it so you're not stretching your hose there um, by just letting it hang. These On these big trucks like this with the, these twin pistons, I mean, this is like a, I don't know, a 30 pound caliper. So you're going to, you're going to damage your, um, your flex hose there and probably leak if you just cut it hanging. So you got to support it well. And, um, I do really like these hangers, especially for these bigger trucks. I think this is actually maybe an OTC brand one, but, um, you know, there's different brands uh, out there as well. So, uh, so yeah, I think that is, this is now truly the end of the video guys. And I hope, uh, this was helpful. Uh, happy wrenching, guys, and have a good day.